places like Vegas and Cape Town are not out of reach. To get the seats changed, we're changing the seats, we're adding more seats in our business class. Bali and Japan are just our two biggest markets. Um, they are massive for us and there's no sign of that uh, interest waning at all. I think what's happening now is just us going through a big growth phase. We've got lots of new aircraft coming in. The technology of the aircraft that's coming means that smaller aircraft can go further, which means that unlocks even more network, new routes, new places to fly. Um, our, some of our other aircraft we're changing the inside of so they can fly further, which means new international routes, new domestic routes, and Jetstar, I think, plays this unique role in the Australian um, landscape, which is it, it enables people to travel more regularly than they would be able to otherwise because it's such an affordable fare. So I think you'll see just Jetstar growing, hiring more people, growing our family, which means that more people can then fly Jetstar as well. Can you tell us about any new international routes that we may not know about yet? There's, there's some coming really soon. Um, with what we're doing with our bigger aircraft, the 787, they'll be able to fly further. So places like Vegas and Cape Town are not out of reach. I'm not confirming we're doing them. Um, but also the new aircraft that are coming, um, the narrow, new narrow bodies, what we call the NEOs or, or the XLRs coming soon. They can go to other places in Southeast Asia and you know we launched Rarotonga and, and Melbourne Fiji in the last year where you can actually take the smaller aircraft further which opens up more sort of point to point destinations which means there'll be new places to go in that sort of six to eight hour flying range as well. Oh the 787 start, that's our big um, plane, they start being reconfigured next year. Um, so that opens up new opportunities for that aircraft to do different places as the smaller aircraft can do some of the six to eight hour flying. They go in, I think they go in for about a month to get the seats changed, we're changing the seats, we're adding more seats in our business class, putting on a crew rest because that means that the crew can operate longer distances with a crew rest and putting on Wi-Fi as well. Bali and Japan are just our two biggest markets. Um, they are massive for us and there's no sign of that uh, interest waning at all. If we could fly more to Bali, we would. Um, it is just, post-COVID had an absolute, the revival we probably all thought it would, but Australians love going to Bali. I think Japan is, um, the way that the yen has been, has also attracted Australians, especially during ski season, um, to head to Japan. So we're expecting a really busy, um, December to March over this coming year where I know a lot of Australians are heading to Japan. There's places in Japan and around those areas that I think, you know, I'd love to be able to fly directly into Sapporo um, rather than go via Narita. Um, and there's other places, I think Korea's right for some more growth. Um, Australians are loving going to Korea, which has really become a new sort of spot to go. I think Rarotonga's doing incredibly well for us. so looking more at the Pacific. I think Fiji's always done well, but Rarotonga's a bit of a new destination for people to try. And it's, I don't know if you've been, but it's fantastic.